There we go. Can you hear me now? I don't hear you. Oh, you know what? I just did a whole bunch of talking and nobody could hear me. <laughs> I was welcoming everyone, so welcome everyone. They were seeing me. <laughs> Hello, Melinda. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I'm so excited to do this. I'm looking I forward know. to this very much. Oh, me too. Me too. We've got a handful of people who have joined us early, who I said hello to earlier, but you couldn't hear me. Genesis, <laughs> Peggy, Robin, Roseanne, and Wanda coming in. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I enjoy this. I, what I don't enjoy is having to wear my glasses so I can see. Well, don't, because I, I can be the one that does this side of it. Well, you're so cute, but I can't even see your face without my glasses. I oh. have to. I can. <laughs> I have, I've gotten old, old. <clears throat> I need to make myself a promise and go get contact lenses pretty soon so I don't have to, because then I look up and you can't see anything. So, you know, mm, I the joys know. of getting old. The older <laughs> I get, I've now had to start wearing reading glasses. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. You're young. You're a baby. It all changes. That age is always not a friend. Yeah, my father always says, you know, those golden years, uh, they lie. <laughs> They're not so golden. <laughs> uh, I think internally it can be. I remember my grandmother who died one week short of her 91st birthday. Wow. And she says, I just, uh, she always felt like herself. The body didn't work the way it used to. And she says, every time she looked in a mirror, she couldn't believe who she saw. But she says, I still feel like me. I don't feel like I'm 90 years old. Yep yeah it's like, true my dad just turned 96 and and he said you know I still think I'm 39 that's great that's yeah. great yeah no. but we get, get a little wiser I tell you I'd rather have all the wisdom I have now than what I had when I was 20 or 30 isn't that the truth mm -hmm. I've never been smarter and I always tell my kids I'm always going to be smarter than you no matter how much school education you get, I'll always still be smarter than you because <laughs> it's called life. <laughs> and they can say that to their kids. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Are your kids old enough to have kids? They are. And thank goodness nobody does yet because I'm not ready to be a grandma. I, <laughs> my oldest is 39 and my youngest, I have four, and my youngest is 23. Oh, very nice. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I've been, I've been doing this parenting for a long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could be a grandmother, but I never got married. So I have a cat. That's mm. good. They're easier. You can leave them at home. You don't get in trouble. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't, you know, it's interesting because I, I always assumed I'd get married sometime. And welcome to everyone who's joining us. This is just a little chit chat before we start at the top of the hour. Um, but I never had a strong desire to uh, be a mom although I love children and this life purpose of helping people believe in the afterlife and helping people through grief, uh, I think was in the divine plan of me and I couldn't have that life and do this life. And now I think Mr. Wonderful will see me on one of these zoom shows or in a live thing. I think it's, everything's absolutely perfect the way it is because I think, I think we're all inner children, you know? And so to be yeah. able to, um, be with people and love them. I feel like I'm a mom to many and that's okay. Absolutely. Well, we're all here for different purposes and reasons and, and I couldn't have done this work if my children were really young still and, and required a lot of my time. So it, it all is, a, is within that divine timing. It is. It is. And I'm excited. I, yes. I just, I tell you, I know for myself and I know that's one of the reasons why we're here about understanding when things happen and how to move to the other side. But I know you'll get into this, but I would never have seen that my darkest hours would turn into a good thing, you know, and what, what can happen. So always asking people to consider uh, that their spiritual growth can come out of those tough times. There is always spiritual growth, no matter what it is um, and how difficult the lesson is, there is always something um, positive that comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm excited we're here. We've got nine minutes to go. I want to welcome everyone who's joining us. I'm Sandra. This is my friend, Melinda. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, and this will be recorded. Everyone will get a complimentary replay a little bit later on this evening or wherever in the world you are. Melinda, we have people registered from 
all over the world, even oh. some people, uh, New Zealand, Australia area, who are waking up very early in the morning to be Oh, uh, how nice of them to join us because that's not easy. It's I hope a we're a little easy on their eyes this morning to ease them into their coffee and... <laughs> The coffee and chat. <laughs> oh, and that's just it. People that are joining us might be familiar with a traditional Zoom room where you see everybody. And so you can be in your jammies right now because we can't see you. And one of the reasons we're doing it this way is uh, we're filming it so it can be shown to anyone at a future date. So we want to keep your self private. We will. Yeah, I was kind of bummed when I asked you, do I have to actually get dressed for this? <laughs> <laughs> And you said, yes, no pajamas. <laughs> well, it's interesting you say that, but there is a young woman who will remain nameless right now that I recently interviewed, and we made a deal that we would do the interview in our pajamas. So she knows who she is. She's watching right now. But it was really fun. I, you know, because of all these Zoom things we're doing in lockdown, I've gotten up every day and I've gotten dressed because I've been on camera. But that day, mm-mm. -mm, I was true. You. I was wearing my grandmother jammies and just loving it with my big fluffy <laughs> slippers and my cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. This these are some these are some interesting times. I don't find them right now so difficult because I have so much to do at home all the time. <laughs> I'm way okay. That's true. That's true. I'm getting things done that have been on my bucket list of the someday. So making yeah. a lemonade out of lemons mm -hmm. and that's a perspective we can put on although gosh it's difficult to be human sometimes and do that well without the guilt because there's so much guilt that people put on us you know that sometimes we forget we get to be human that's right i saw there's a family that does some really funny music videos uh they're like parody kind of things mm -hmm. and one of them was about that now that we're locked down we're going to clean the house we're going to do this we're going to do this and then the whole message to it was just be gentle on yourself really you know this is this is a tough time the future is unknown don't this is not the time to be hard on yourself and what you should be doing as they say shooting on yourself don't yeah. shoot on yourself <laughs> no <laughs> they do i've heard that i love that that is hysterical. I figured that that um, all of the um, uh, stores that have all, you can shop everything online. I think they created the virus so they could keep growing bigger. <laughs> I said, darn, wish I would have bought stock. <laughs> uh, I know. Well, I tell you, the Zoom, it must be doing fantastic because there's so many people doing reunions and even when we're done here, I've got some friends in the UK. We're going to do a trivia night, like a quiz night. Oh, fun. Uh, all via Zoom. Oh, yeah, with cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> That's so much fun. So Zoom is definitely doing well for people. Zoom and the other kinds of um, FaceTime and all those sort of things. It's yeah. nice. It is nice. It's, true. It's, a, it's a beautiful way to remember we're supposed to stay connect and reconnect with those. Mm -hmm. And connect with ourselves, too. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Very true. Oh, so we got about five minutes to go. Ladies and gentlemen who are joining us, my name is Sandra Champlain, and the beautiful blonde is Melinda. And we will be hosting this in just about five minutes' time. So get yourself a, a hot beverage or glass of water, whatever suits your fancy, and we'll start at the top of the hour. Yeah, it might be happy hour somewhere, right? I would say it is. Mm -hmm. I would say it is. It's five o'clock somewhere as Jimmy Buffett sings. <laughs> That's much fun. Yeah. Let's see. I'm just watching folks come in. I've got uh, the attendee list and I just really grateful. I won't name everybody by name, but when we see that you're here and we're really grateful that you're choosing to spend some time with Melinda and I today. Really grateful. Absolutely. And uh, the spirit world is very grateful as well. Mm -hmm. They get to share what they want to be able to share with those that are listening in. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. I know what we're doing right now is not a mediumship demonstration, but do you feel the spirit world come in when you speak and then when you're sharing about what we're talking about today? Absolutely. And the, the funny part, uh, I don't know if it's funny, but 
I'll start to talk about something and then I go off into a tangent that I have absolutely no idea why I went off into that tangent. And I have to bring myself back and, and say, did I answer the question that somebody asked me? Because the spirit world is, is so um, productive in when they have the opportunity to speak to us and I'm not channeling, I don't want anybody to think that it's just what they actually speak to me about to share with you. They use my knowledge and the ability that I have, my mediumship becomes secondary in this, as opposed to what the spirit world would like for everybody to know. That's really um, nice. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy for us to forget, even when we're dealing with a medium, that we are all souls having a human experience. So there is this part of ourselves that we can all tap into this unseen world. And we, whether you call it your intuitive sense or your psychic nature or that mm -hmm. gut feeling, and yep. you being a medium, having worked with the spirit world for over 25 years, you've really, I don't want to say harnessed that ability, but you really can, you know what that is and what it feels like. And so they know that you are a vessel to say whether it's messages when you do a mediumship reading or something like this, that this needs to be said. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the interesting, the interesting part of, of all of this is, you know, everybody's psychic whether you use it in your abilities, it's your intuitiveness. <clears throat> and it's tapping into those that makes it, that's why I'm actually teaching a course right now, um, a six week course, uh, the psychic in you, because it's so important for people to recognize, it's not, doesn't mean you go off and do readings, but you get to know what the spirit world wants to share with you. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And they do. And the more we're at home, I'm noticing the thoughts that are coming in that normally my mind is so busy thinking about what needs to be done, having more quiet moments that thoughts, new ideas, inspiration, and even my mom who's in the next room, who there's times that she loves hearing these kind of things. There's other times she looks at me like, this is kind of weird. Uh, but she's finding herself having dreams of loved ones right now and these experiences that we're both thinking the same things at the same time and so it's we're engaging in more conversations about this higher uh, part of ourselves than normal so I, I'm digging it I really am because we all want people in our life that we can talk to about this and I know that we don't all Absolutely. have that Absolutely. I mean, you know what, you know what else too, I think with us going through this whole virus stuff, um, that the spirit world is like, okay, now everybody open up, listen to what's going on, tune into who you are, because um, they're working hard on the other side too, I noticed. I noticed like, because I still meditate with a group on Wednesday nights, and I noticed the messages have become a bit different, the understanding's a little bit different the actual spirit world certain certain guides will come through stronger than others and sometimes they're they're off learning themselves so it's it's a change also in the spirit world because we have to spiritually open up and move forward we do we do got a couple seconds left before we start officially i am someone if you don't know me who likes to start on time <laughs> but i'm gonna have a little sip of water cheers everybody hopefully everybody's cozy wherever you are whatever time it is it's top of the hour. Melinda, are you ready to go? I am ready to go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sandra Champlain. I'm the host of We Don't Die Radio. I'm also the author of a book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And I'd like to welcome you to Living with Inner Peace. Our special guest and hostess with the mostest is Melinda Kushner. Melinda is a psychic medium who has over 25 years of experience working with the spirit world, uh, having over 500 workshops, working with over 10,000 people. Uh, she's got a very near and dear connection with our friends and helping parents heal.org. She gives freely as a medium to parents. And also, she does a lot of workshops online with them. I mean, she's just a beautiful soul. This is not a mediumship demonstration. So I just wanted to clear that up. Although Melinda and I were talking just prior to starting about doing a mediumship demonstration with her, hosted by We Don't Die Radio, as you know, we do those with some other folks as well. 
This event is being recorded. So after the fact, you will have a video replay. Also, there will be times in the discussion that Melinda might have questions or might be able to answer your questions. I'll put it to you that way. If you have no problem having your name being used that other people see in a future recording, when that time comes, there's a button where you can raise your hand uh, like this. Um, or you can ask a question in the question and answer box that you will see. And that way, if you do want to remain anonymous, I, I can ask the question for you. So with that, Melinda, I'm going to turn it over to you and we'll just have a dance. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra. It's always a pleasure when I get to speak with you and spend time with you because what you do is amazing for other people and that's very much appreciated. Um, so as Sandra said, I sounded so old when she said I've been doing this for 25 years. Um, <laughs> actually, I was a little girl and the spirit world used to come to me. And I remember the times of crying because I was so scared of the spirit world. And I would cry with the covers over my face at night because I couldn't figure out why would they come? Why would they come and scare the heck out of me? Especially my family told me I was kind of crazy for all of this. Um, through the years, I learned that that was what a medium is and you got to connect to the spirit world you get to get those messages from spirit not only to create the healing really within yourself but also with others and excuse me and that's when I look at all of this and I recognize that my mediumship now where I love to connect with loved ones I actually before I started this had done a reading this morning and being able to connect to the spirit world brings such healing healing for the spirit world and healing for us that are here because sometimes lots of times there are things that haven't been able to have been spoken we lose our loved ones into the spirit world or we think we lose our loved ones in the spirit world when really they're just right here they're right next to you. It's my belief that the spirit world lives so close that you could almost reach your hand out and touch them, how close the spirit world is. But we forget that because we don't have the physical um, connection. We feel as if we can't squeeze and hug them, that they're not close to us, but really they are close to us. And what they're doing is telling us how and what we really should be doing when we're here whether we choose to listen to it or not is a whole nother story it's like you know when you're raising your children and you look at your children and you think oh my gosh they're not listening to me um, i'm trying to guide them i'm trying to i'm trying to teach them the right way and you know really the spirit world's kind of saying the same thing about us they try to guide us they try to teach us they try to bring us to that better thought process um, and then we have our free will because your free will kicks in and we get to make those choices. So for me, it's one of my jobs is to try to help other people understand that you get to make that free will choice, but understand what the other side of that is, whether it's a negative or a positive response. I know a lot of people are so afraid that when their loved ones go into spirit, that it's just a, an awful place to be if they've passed, whether it's through taking themselves into the spirit world, whether it's somebody else has taken them into the spirit world, whether they have passed and they've been, say, in a, in, you know, having Alzheimer's or living in a different thought process of a dimension, they think that their loved ones are stuck and, or they're put into a, you know, I was raised Catholic, uh, or they're put into purgatory or hell. And, and I personally, I don't believe in hell. And um, I believe that purgatory is a state of mind that we choose to live in. And, um, but again, it's a choice that we get to make when we come out to the other side. <clears throat> so the spirit world through mediumship readings will not only give me wonderful evidence that, <clears throat> pardon me, that they are here and they're connected through the evidence, but then they share what's going on with your life as well to show what, what, you're doing the thought process process of where you're going things that they want to be able to make up with you apologize to you um, share with you the peace because you know our world especially as we are living right now people can create an atmosphere around them that creates such high anxiety um, people are worried we don't know where we're going we don't have the thought process that we did say uh, six months ago even, you know, we are sitting in a world of the unknown. 
but that's only if we choose for it to be of the unknown. I'm going to say something that, and I hope I don't offend anybody when I say this, but my belief is, is God, whether it's God's source, whether it is a tree you worship, whatever your belief system is, doesn't make it right or wrong. It makes it best for who you are and your greater understanding of who you are and what you need to um, believe in and move forward in. So I hope I don't offend anybody when I say God, but I believe in God being of the, of the highest level of where our knowledge comes from. And, and with that, our spirit world works in conjunction with what we're supposed to be doing and our greater understanding of our own soul's journey. I love that word, um, your soul's journey, because that's exactly what it is. You know, we're born here with what I believe is an architectural plan. Um, and in that are lots of different stages throughout our life. Also in that are things that we, um, are called, uh, we consider our free will. You know, I use examples from my own life. I was, uh, I was offered a job uh, at the Playboy Club many years, many years ago. And, um, and I made the choice that I didn't want to go down that route because down that route would have been um, things that I would never have wanted to actually live. You know, you look back on and you go, gosh, I'm so grateful I didn't get to do something like that. That's that free will that I'm talking about. I chose to. Uh, I was a nurse. I was an ophthalmic nurse for years, and I'm so grateful that I had that that experience in my life. Um, so we look at our free will. We look at things that happen in our lives that either can create that anxiety or create the peace. And sometimes we work so hard at trying to create peace that we don't recognize that um, we also are creating anxiety, right? So I kind of jotted down because my brain tends to go off. So I had to kind of jot down a few things to share with you, um, you know, to kind of simply speak of um, uh, what peace and inner peace is, right? Because we have the worldly inner peace and then we have the spiritual inner peace. And my, uh, my joy is the spiritual inner peace, but we all live in this world. So we're here for that human experience and to have that memory and understanding of why we experience the things that we experience. There's a lot of devastation in life. There's a lot of sadness. And there's a lot of, of you know, you, you have people in your life that can create such um, feelings of hopelessness that you have to recognize that we are in control of that soul's journey. You know, to simplify your life mentally and spiritually so that you're always at peace. So how do you bring those two together, right? That's, that's a really big thought process. How are you going to bring those two together? Because we have the outer world that creates, you know, we have we have the virus, we have politics, we have marriages, children, parents, siblings, all of these aspects of our life can create um, anxiety or can create peace. There's a lot of times that I connect the, the, um, the uh, sitter in when I'm doing readings to a parent in the spirit world. We'll go with that aspect. There are so many times that parent comes through saying, I am so sorry I didn't put you first. I'm so sorry that there are times that I turned and walked out of your life, which created you to have that anxiety, that animosity, that then created for you to treat your own children in the same manner, in the same aspect. So we need to stop and think what we're doing, right? That is just one of, of many situations that we can all that we can all relate to. So when you look at how a parent, I'll use this as an example, how a parent, when you're, uh, when you have children and the child is growing up and the parent um, has their own issues going on in life, right? They've had their own terrible childhood. And then they put on into your little soul when you're born here, that own, your own anxiety, and then what you create. And you know, it's like the snowball effect, right? If we don't stop that snowball from rolling down the hill, all we keep doing is creating that anxiety animosity that is created with a mental and spiritual dysfunction, basically, is what happens. 
things. So we need to learn how to smooth those horribly sharp edges around us. That's why I believe that the spirit world comes through as strong as they do. They come through for to let you know that life is continuous and love is always, always. And if you keep the simplicity of what they have to say to you, life becomes so much easier to handle, to understand. Then you ask yourself, so why do I have a child in spirit? Why do I have two children in spirit? Why is it that I, was li I lived a life and my parents beat me every day of my life until I couldn't do anything but get out? Why do you have people that choose to be homeless? Do they choose or is it environmental? All of these things and many, many more play such a heavy role into what we can do and why we're here, not just to help ourselves, but we're here to help each other. We're here to help each other grow. We're here to help that greater understanding as to why things happen. And I'm going to give you another example. Um, I have a, a cousin that is right now, as we speak, in prison for killing a 15-month-old child in a stroller. It was all over the news. I was embarrassed to say that that was my cousin. She had been drinking and got in the car and ran these, you know, unintentional, but ran these uh, two people over and killed the baby in the stroller. And, you know, of course you want to, <laughs> you deserve everything that you get. Whatever happens to you, you, she lost her home, you know, she lost everything. As us here on, in the world, we go, you deserve everything that you get. Because, oh my gosh, here's this 15-month-old now and these parents that don't get to have their child with them. And I then look back and I recognize her father, my uncle, is in spirit. And the pain that he has endured to have to watch what his daughter chose to do by the drinking. And why did she drink? She was hiding her pain because of his abusive ways. So you have to look, again, that snowball effect of why people are the way they are. And not that it makes it right, that, gosh, it makes you understand things at so much of a different level. At least in my world, it does. I, I look at people that are in so much pain, and they live with so much pain around them that they forget that we're supposed to forgive whoever that also is. It created maybe that pain as well. Um, so you ask yourself, how are you going to have that inner peace? How are you going to relax your anxiety? How are you going to put your worry where your worry belongs? Because I don't know about you guys, but there's been plenty of times I've had such high anxiety and I've had so much worry that at two o'clock in the morning, I can't do anything, but think about, uh, you know, I don't know, people are going to break in and kill me, but you know, whatever, whatever that horrible anxiety is, things are going to happen. And we create these things. And I know that probably sounds maybe foreign to you, but truly we create these things. Yes, it's created by the exterior, but then we internalize it. And so how are we going to soften these inside of ourselves so that we can live with that inner peace? So here's a couple things I wrote down. One is we need to set your limitations. You need to think about what you have going on around you. Am I going to listen to the news all the time? Oh, heck no. The news makes me crazy. And to be honest with you, I'm not even sure who's telling the truth anymore on all of the news stations. So all of this feeds into your thought process. So it creates anxiety. You know, if you go back and you think about this, I know this is really going to sound crazy, but if you go back to religions, what do, what do, what do religions do? They create also anxiety inside of you by, by giving you that fear. If you, I remember I was five, six years old and I figured I was going to hell because I talked back to my parents and I'm thinking, wait a second, I'm going to go share hell with, with somebody that killed somebody. I, I just, I, I could not comprehend that. Um, so we need to recognize that we get to, um, be in control of what happens around us. Are there certain things that we can't control? Um, you can't maybe control the action, but you can control the reaction. You can control how it is that you react to these things. Um, I always use a funny example, which I don't, at the time isn't funny, but when I drive, I turn into, I don't know if you ever remember the character Goofy on the Disney show, when he would get behind the wheel and just be crazy. And I would, 
I would be like, oh my gosh, that's me sometimes. I really need to calm it down because if somebody is living in their own world driving and they do something stupid, like pull in front of you or whatever it is that they do, instead of screaming and yelling at them and saying nasty things, you have to recognize that who knows where they are. And so that's my control of, of being in control of not reacting to their, um, I still call it stupidity, but at any rate, to their times of not paying attention. Um, because, you know, you think about it, if you react to somebody like that in such a negative way, you're creating another type of snowball effect in their life as well. Because who knows the things that you may say to them or what you uh, have done to them, um, finger gestures, whatever, but um, that you create their own dysfunction inside of themselves and it puts them in a bad mood. Maybe they go home and, and take it out on their family or they go to work and they we have to be very well aware of what it is we do to each other to create um, the either peace or the anxiety in another person's life. You know, I think about that all the time with my kids, you know, when they were growing up, I just, there were so many times they just make you so frustrated and you're just like, just do what I say. But that's not an actual reality as to what needs to happen. We have to create that peace in, in each other. So setting your limitations. Um, I don't know about you guys, but going on social media can really push you over the edge. Um, the politics, gossip, all of those different things. Put those into perspective of what you can actually handle. Because blood pressure is not a pretty thing when it goes to high levels, especially what's going on within our, our world right now. So how are you going to take care of those? Well, I love meditation. Some people say there's no way I can meditate. And I say, I agree. I understand that. There are times I can't meditate. There are times I didn't think I was going to be able to meditate. Meditation is in different forms for everybody. Whether you sit quiet um, all by yourself and you put on some music and whatever kind of music that you feel comfortable with, you don't even have to close your eyes. But you can get into your own zone of your smoothing out your thought process, understanding what's gone on for the day, be bringing in that relaxing thought process. That's important. There are other people that love to have guided meditation, you know, where somebody can talk you through. Um, I do a few different types of guided meditation, but I think it's also so important that you learn how and what's best for you. Your most favorite place to sit and meditate. I love the beach personally. I love to think about the wind and the and smelling the 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 water and the ocean. That's that's one of my favorite places to sit within my mind's um, eye to to stay in there and to understand that you can invite your loved ones there you can invite your guides there and it doesn't matter by the way who your guides are it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what matters is the spirit world is sharing with you your loved ones from spirit you can invite whoever you want within your meditation uh, within your meditative thought process again eyes open eyes closed i say with your eyes open it's a very contemplative state like there's plenty of times I go in my backyard and I will do yard work and I will get some wonderful messages within my mind that I know that's in a contemplative state because I don't have to think about what I'm doing in the yard. It's a relaxing time for you. So for you to think about what is relaxing for you, do these things for yourself. Remember that you and your soul are the most important part of who you are. Because I always say, your soul has all of the answers. How are you going to get to those answers is up to you. So we think about different different experiences that have happened in our life. And sometimes we're angry because sometimes maybe they're violent. Sometimes maybe they're just little hurtful things that people say, because we all take things differently. But when you take these and you think about how they resonate inside of you, if you truly take that issue and kind of move it to the side and let the spirit world join you within your soul, you'll have the answer to why maybe that person has done this or how is this a lesson and a growth time for you. So it's, it's and we'll get into that a little bit deeper as well, because again, we're going to I'm going to take questions because I know that there's a few of you that have emailed me to ask, uh, ask different questions, but it's remembering, it's remembering why we're here because there are plenty of times when we don't 
understand why are we here? What are we doing here? What is the purpose of all of this? And I don't think there's anybody in this world that can answer that specific question except for the fact that it's your soul's journey. It's up to each and every one of us to figure out what that is, how that feels, what we're going to do with it. So I know the uh, under meditation I have, you know, your breathing exercises, remembering to stay focused. Again, there's a lot of people that, that um, I know when I used to start to meditate many, many, many years ago, I was afraid to close my eyes. I was afraid the spirit world would touch me and I didn't want them to touch me because they would come so close to me. I didn't know until I started um, really training in this that we are allowed to say, please don't touch me. Because I didn't know really anybody in the spirit world. I didn't have any grandparents at the time. I had nothing like that in the spirit world. I really knew that it would scare me if they would touch me. And they touch me quite often. So it always used to kind of scare me. So I would say, keep your eyes open. Light a candle. Stare at that candle. Just take those wonderful breaths. There are so many wonderful um, tracks of relaxing, meditative music on YouTube. Pop one of those in start it just listen to it find which one works for you because some of them irritate me some of them are incredibly beautiful and everybody is different as to what works best for you um the other thing i always like to talk about again and again we're going to we can go back through all of these things so if you have any questions write them down um putting all of your issues into a into perspective you know, you ever get something, especially at 2 o'clock in the morning, and it runs over and over and over in your head, and you've created a mountain out of something that we've been in We have to remember to put these things into perspective. Just say, okay, let's put it to the side. Let's step out of it so that we can understand truly whatever the issue is that's going on inside of us. Again, I'm talking a lot about our... our um, material world, the things that we have around, our worldly things right now. Um, learning to slow down in life. How many times, oh my goodness, when my kids were little, I'd be running around, I have to do this, I have to do that. I, and I never took time for myself. How many of you can honestly say that you actually take time for yourself? I know that I haven't in lots of times. I bet you Sandra hasn't. Lots of times, always putting everybody first and forgetting that we are important, that it is important to recognize who we are, what we have to offer um, to ourselves. You know, I always say, can you look in front of the mirror and say that you truly love yourself? That's a hard one. And that's where we need to learn that we get to get back to or get to if you've never even done it is you need to learn to love yourself because I know that a lot of people are here because we want to help each other but how can you help another person when you still have your own issues and needing to help yourself and it's really important to to grow within that self-help again to help others me being a medium I had to go through so many things to have that greater understanding what the other side is um, of life and I'm not talking about the spirit world but the other side of life why do we have these issues going on in our in our lives why do we have this this you know terrible um, scars that that happen to us as we're growing up why do we have these well because we get to learn through them we get to understand them for what they are we get to understand the person that maybe um, induced this into your life and then you get to heal, truly forgive, and that's not easy. That is so not easy to truly forgive another person and to be able to move forward in life with love, with love. I've, I have a few of those times in my life. Um, and also, you know, just remembering one thing at a time, taking things in one thing at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself because you know what? When you are awake at 2 o'clock in the morning and you are just overly anxious about things, at the end of that, what is it done? All of that thinking, all of that, it, it creates dark circles, whatever else. But we don't have the answer yet. So if you take the time, when you have horrible anxiety, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the evening, whatever works best for you, to sit in the quietness of who you are 
what your understanding is and bring these thoughts to the surface and then bring them to the spirit world your guides your loved ones will give you those answers and give you that ability of how you get to to understand them and move through them does it happen overnight oh no it takes time it's a lesson learned it can take a year it can take six months it can take five years it's all different for each and every one of us because we have those levels that we need to get through um, remembering again always speaking kind to others again that's so important um, the other thing that I've noticed in life and I still I still have to think about this are the words we speak when we speak words to others we can create pain or we can create love and I always remember when I was you know nine months pregnant and feeling hot and disgusting and I'm out shopping and somebody would walk up to me and say oh my gosh you are so lucky you get to have a baby and you look just so beautiful you're so lucky and I remember thinking at the time oh really you're just saying that to me but you know honestly it was the one thing that made me feel so wonderful compliment somebody else let them realize how important that you don't have to know them just being able to bring that inner peace to another person is so important again that's why we're here trying to make sure that I've I've gone over all that I wanted to go through before I get into to details okay so here's what I want to talk about I want to talk about first and foremost I want to talk about forgiveness I want to talk about the depths of forgiveness because when we don't forgive I to me I think that is one of our biggest energy stealers inside of us it's one of our biggest anxieties and forgiveness on the outside sounds okay so I know I forgive you but when you truly forgive somebody it doesn't feel as though yeah I forgive them but I'm never gonna forget so I have taken myself for uh, what I've had to learn in forgiveness and and again this is it's my belief um, I look at I believe that Jesus walked on earth whether uh, ho however you look at things but if you believe that Jesus walked on earth and that Jesus had the ability to forgive those who crucified him in the last words that he spoke prior to his passing on the cross to me how could I not forgive other people for not crucifying me but making me feel maybe uncomfortable for who I am saying cruel things I can honestly say with myself there is not one person in this world that has done some pretty awful things to me that I haven't forgiven and I'm here to tell you I've had some pretty terrible things that I've had happen to me that I have chosen to forgive because one that person has lived their life with all of their pain and sometimes they don't know any other way but to be sometimes that incredibly negative person in your life and if you understand where they're coming from or even if you don't know the details about where they're coming from to understand to love another person or another person's soul to that depth is the best part of your forgiveness for them and for yourself I'm going to give an example and and I hope I don't offend anybody by this but uh, back in 1979 I had been raped somebody came up behind me with, at gunpoint and they raped me I went to court with eight other women that he had raped he had already been in prison for rape and went on to not spend one day in prison for rape after that and went on to, uh, uh, he, he spent time in prison for breaking parole for rape and stealing cars um, that's what he spent time in prison for and I have to tell you at the time I was just like oh my gosh I spent an enormous amount of my my years having so much anxiety I'm scared to go out at night I, I didn't want to go anywhere by myself um, thinking about here's this man going out there doing whatever he wants and he got away with it that's what it felt like to me he got away with with what he wanted 
And then years later to find out he's out in another state doing the same thing. So I'm like, where is our judicial system in all of this? And then I said, you know what? It's not my place. It's not my place to condemn that person. Did he make me wise? Did he give me knowledge? Did he give me the ability to share with other people that you can have forgiveness? Yes. And I'm so appreciative for that time in my life. Because if I didn't have that time in my life, I couldn't say to you that I pray for him because I feel so sorry for him. My goodness, what happened to him to create him to become a rapist? To me, that's that deep forgiveness that we have to be able to give to another person, lots of other people in life. And when you truly have that ability to forgive, oh my goodness, you truly have that inner peace, that understanding of why that person is in your life. The forgiveness. We have lots of times where we don't forgive our parents for what they've done. There's lots of times we don't forgive ourselves for what we've done. You know, that self-forgiveness is um, probably one of the most difficult because it usually is associated with grief, right? We have lots of grief that happens. We have lots of guilt that goes along with that. And understanding that that guilt, um, that grief, and the forgiveness really is all encompassing and we are holding ourselves back from that type of growth. And here's where I'm going to say, Sandra, that I'd like to open up um, in regards to forgiveness right now. If anybody has any questions or examples, please feel free. Thanks. And this is wonderful. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say, I know um, with grief, there's a lot of feelings of guilt that are automatically part of the grieving process. Just wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. And also, I, I've heard something too about self-forgiveness, the fact that it doesn't do us any good to hang on to guilt because at that time, we made the very best decision that we could at that moment. Absolutely. And I know that goes back to with um, a lot of times when we have, um, example again, my mother passed. Yes, she was 90 years old. However, I didn't get to be there. I came home because she had just been in the hospital. Had I been there, I kept telling myself, I could have told those doctors, what the heck are you doing by overdosing her on pain medication? Because she had fallen, broke her shoulder. They overdosed her on pain medication, which um, she died from cardiac arrest because of the too much medication. So I fought with myself over that grief. Uh, why couldn't I have been there? Why couldn't I have done something better? And you know what? You know, my mom told me when she went into spirit world, who, by the way, did not believe in any of this, which I find pretty funny because she comes and visits with me all the time now. Um, she told me that it was exactly what it was supposed to be. I wasn't supposed to be there. It wasn't something that I needed to change the outcome of. And we have to realize that when we live with the decisions that we make, it's what it is supposed to have been. There are so many times I talk with parents that feel so guilty. I should have known this. I should have known that. No. Why? Why? I always say, look in reverse. If you were in the spirit world, and your loved ones were here, and they were living with that grief. They were living with that, um, with that deep, deep sadness and regret. Would you want them to live like that? And every time that person said, no, no, I don't want them to live like that. So why are you doing that to yourself? Logically speaking, you can't change the outcome, right? We can't change. What happened has happened. And that's the logical side, that process. But then there's the spiritual side of this where, um, it happened for a true, true reason as to why we didn't um, have the ability to change what that outcome is. And that's something that that soul, your loved one's soul, when they went into spirit, that's how they chose to. Thank you. We have a question. It doesn't directly relate to forgiveness, but it's a topic that I think would help when we're talking about why things happen. And then 
um, you can answer her question as well. Our friend asks, my 17 year old daughter took her own life this past January. How do I know if she is free and happy now? First and foremost, I'm so very sorry. I'm so very sorry that you've had to endure this because it's, you know, again, losing your child to the spirit world is something that we're not supposed to do. It's not something that we should have, be having to endure. And, and my deepest condolences to you. So here's what I know. I have, I have done so many readings for people that have crossed themselves into the spirit world. And all I can say to you is every single one that I do, they always come through with, oh my gosh, I'm so much happier. It was just a beautiful time when I went into the spirit world that the spirits around me created so much comfort and so much understanding that I felt the love, so much love that I hadn't thought that I was deserving of prior to going into the spirit world. So there's always the forgiveness, always, always, always. Nobody ever is lost. Nobody's ever stuck. Everybody goes into the spirit world. Remember, we have worlds that we go into our first world is the mental world and that's where um our loved ones go first that's where we go as well but we go there first our guides are with us i have people that'll say to me i have a baby that went to spirit there's nobody in the spirit world that would know them and i'm so afraid that they're lost and i say never remember they have their guides there are other spirits in the spirit world that are so close to each one of our souls that they're always there how do you know that they're happy because, again, the spirit world takes care of everything that needs to be taken care of when you get there. You're safe. You're loved. I have to tell you, I work very hard at not being angry when I hear other people speak that either a child that crosses themselves or a person that crosses themselves over into spirit goes into a different realm which it makes me absolutely crazy because I'm here to tell you that I've spoken to somebody, a few somebodies that have crossed the day before by crossing themselves into spirit. And guess what? They still come through. They still come through with all that love because that's where they are. There is nothing dark whatsoever, ever. And all of our loved ones go into the spirit world. Thank you. And then I, I have just a natural question. We're talking about why things happen. Um, I believe this as well, that our soul comes into this earth to learn lessons and things. But I would much rather learn my lesson by stubbing my toe than having a child cross into the unseen world. Does our soul pick what these things are? Or is there a part of us that part of the deal coming in as being human is there's all kinds of things that happen that we're going to learn from because some I, I can't help but think there really are such things of ac as accidents and things like that right and I agree with you Sandra I think that there are every every child that crosses into into the spirit world um, every person that crosses themselves into the spirit world um, is it planned no I don't think so I think you know, no pun intended, but I think there's a happy medium to look at in both of these aspects because I do believe that there's free will. I do believe that there's um, an architectural plan. And I do believe that there are accidents when things happen that are un unforeseen. Um, but never once, ever once, have I ever had a spirit in the spirit world say to me, oh my goodness, I didn't want to come here. Never. It's, oh my goodness, you have no idea how beautiful it is here. You have no idea. Prime was my mom when she went into the spirit world, who did not believe this because she thought I was going to go and live with Satan for the rest of my life because this was a cult. And she came to me the day after she passed and said, you were right. It's beautiful. So to me, that was my biggest confirmation was, was my own mom. And, and so, and I look at all of this and yes, there's so much pain but I also want to say to people that it's so important to remember that when our loved ones go into the spirit world, don't let them go without recognizing that this is also a lesson for you, a greater understanding of your own soul, not just theirs. Don't let your child, your loved one, 
death be in vain. Learn from it at whatever level that is. Because there are so many different levels of that uh, uh, going to the spirit world in vain, right? Because right. we all go, we all go differently. And um, I hope that's answered your question. Thank you. We have an Anna that would like to ask a question. Anna, I have unmuted you. Hello. All right. Hi. How are you? Great. Good. Thanks, <laughs> Anna. Hi. Do we do our sons who are in spirit? know our exit when we will exit this earth oh your loved ones in spirit do they know when you're going to be coming to the other side so yes, I, my, I under see. my understanding is the spirit world knows no matter how we go six to eight weeks prior to our to our passing into spirit so they prepare so i don't know if you've ever um heard read been with somebody that's been say like with alzheimer's or they are um in the process of in hospice and they're slowly starting to pass they'll start speaking to their loved ones in spirit they're like hey do you see there's there's mom over there and the people that are sitting here are going I don't see anybody that you're talking about, but it's the process, that slow process of bringing you over to the other side in the slow way. And when it's a quick, if it's an accident, whatever it is, absolutely, they still know, no matter how we go, they still know they are there for you. So nobody goes to the other side with fear. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Could you speak thank a little you. bit? Thank you, Anna. Uh, also about when people are tremendously suffering, for instance, my dad on his final days, his body suffered incredibly, uh, screaming in pain with grief, not grief, with cancer, pain. Um, eyes were closed. He wasn't responsive, but we knew he was in pain. Are our loved ones still there at that time, or is it possible their soul could have moved on? I believe their soul has moved. I believe that, um, and the reason I'm the reason I'm going to say that well, a few different reasons is a lot of the times when this when the spirit world shows, like a prime example, I had done a reading for a lady that had witnessed a bus accident that everybody in the bus was decapitated. She happened to be standing at the side of the row. I know, poor woman. But every person that I know of that came through came through to say, let her know we were all okay. We didn't feel a thing. We didn't feel anything. And I think that's so important for us to remember. I've done a reading for, for parents. And one in particular, I remember, this, this gentleman had been riding on a motorcycle and had crashed into a tree. He took me on the motorcycle ride during the reading with him so I could see what he experienced. And he had shown himself actually on the motorcycle. And when he turned his head, and looked back, he crashed into the tree. Do you know what his mother's biggest fear was? That he did it on purpose. And he wanted to let her know, I didn't do it on purpose. But I had no idea that that was her biggest fear. Because with that came so much peace from her. Her mother was there saying in spirit that she was there with him. There is so much peace when we go into the spirit world. Um, our bodies do not remember the pain. They can tell you how they pass. To share it with you for confirmation that they do not remember the pain ever, no matter how long it is. Good. Excellent. Uh, we have another question. Sure. Uh, how do you carry on after the death of your 18-year-old daughter? That's a very good question because I know there are so many times where I speak to parents and they don't want to go on. They keep saying that they're going to join their child in the spirit world. And I can honestly say to you, all of you, please, please, I understand what you're saying. I do understand what you're saying. But how does that make it good for your soul when you're here? Because that means you haven't done the work that you still need to do here. And I know it's painful. And I understand that grief that goes with it. And it would just be easier if you were with your child or so you think in the spirit world. But remember, when you go into the spirit world, before you've learned everything that you need to learn here, you have to learn it when you get into the spirit world. And it makes it so much more difficult to learn in the spirit world things that we should have learned when we were here. How do you go on? 
one little tiny breath at a time. You know, you have to take the time to remember yourself. You ha I, I always tell parents, and it depends on how long you've been in this process, um, as to what I, my suggestion is to move forward. I do believe in grief counseling. I really do. I, I believe in, in, in groups and organizations. I love helping parents heal because they have so much to offer each other. All these other parents have been through what you've been through. And they can talk to you. They can talk you through things. Um, they even have people in Helping Parents Heal that, uh, for crime sakes, they'll talk to you in the middle of the night if you need. And that's so important for them to reach out and for you to feel good about who you are so that you can slowly take the steps forward. Do you ever get past this? No. We never get past grief. It's just that grief becomes a bit easier to handle, if that makes sense. And when you start moving through the process of this grief, I always make, make a suggestion. You know, your loved ones, if they had something special, if they had a sweater, if they had a blanket, if they had a stuffed animal, whatever it is, take that time and hold, wrap yourself, whatever it is, with, their, with your loved one's item and sit with, it, with them for an hour, 10 minutes, two hours, whatever it takes, knowing that that's your time to share with them. That's your time to share with them because they'll be there with you. Maybe you don't feel them. Maybe you don't see them, but they're there with you. They're experiencing and helping and nurturing you through this time. But honor yourself. Don't ever let anybody tell you, oh, my God, really? It's been five years? What the heck? What is taking you so long? Never. Never. It's, it, 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 it changes who you are for the rest of your life. And those that say it doesn't change them have actually never experienced the pain of this. So you take your time. You take that one step at a time. You honor your feelings. If you feel like crying all day one day, then do it. Who cares? Don't feel guilty when you do make a choice to smile again. Because I know a lot of people feel guilty for smiling afterwards. Um, because you think, oh my goodness, I've forgotten that my sadness. That's not it. Your family, your loved ones wants you to move forward. You'll never forget them and they will never go anywhere because I've had some people come to me and say, oh my goodness, I went to go have a reading done by this medium. I went to have a reading done and they say they can't connect to my husband, whoever, because they've already been reincarnated and they're gone. Oh no. What they should be saying is, oh my goodness, I don't know how to do readings and I shouldn't be a medium because your loved ones do not move on to anybody else or in any other format of reincarnation because we all wait for each other to get to the other side. Because you grow on the other side and you keep learning and you, and you have these wonderful experiences. Um, you know, in the spirit world, we learn at the same level. You know, here we, we meet each other, we have that ability to emerge basically our souls with each other. Well, guess what? We do the same thing on the other, on the other side when we get to that level. There's always growth. Please honor yourself. Recognize that you will have that growth. It's painful. It's painful. But know that you have support. And whether you have a spiritual belief or not, I say to try and find somewhere along the line where your spiritual belief is because you'll find comfort in that. Can I add something? Sure. Uh, many people may or may not, well, he may not have a clue who I am, but I say I've been talking about life after death and being in this research for 25 years. I, most of it was very, very secret. I didn't want people to know this side of me because I thought people who believed in this were a little bit weird. But it really wasn't until the death of my dad that I started studying grief. And our whole chemistry of being human changes when we grieve. And this might be a poor comparison, but if you can imagine someone who's addicted to drugs or alcohol and all of a sudden they're taken away from that you know they go through a period that it takes them a while to get back to who they are and it's a very painful period when we love someone so much and that person is taken away we go through a different yet similar process and it takes a while and there's all kinds of things that happen to our thought patterns extra guilt uh, needing extra sleep, uh, you know, all kinds of things. We can lose our memory at times. And it wasn't until I realized this whole world of grief, which I had never experienced before. 
And so as a gift to everybody watching right now, I will send you a link to a free copy of my book in PDF form. Chapter 10 is about grief. And I've got an audio book too that I'll send you the link to. The thing is, is if you've never experienced deep grief and then all of a sudden you're in it, there's a rational part of us that thinks we should be able to move through it. We should be able to figure this out. There should be a way. And thoughts of suicide and taking yourself out and depression and all that are part of it, but it's a, it's a process. And I think, and I know actually by me finding out what happens and why and what's going on in my brain chemistry, I was able to say, oh my gosh, now I'm experiencing this. Now I'm experiencing that. And I found it helpful, and many people have too that have read my book in this chapter, that you, when you start understanding this process, you realize these things are out of your control. Now, there are good things we can do, like Melinda was talking about, to help get us through, whether being part of a support group, going to a counselor, being of service to other people, but just to have some compassion for yourself. So I will send everybody the replay of this with those links. But just take some time. Um, the, the grief audio part is just is 70 minutes. And just to give yourself a little compassion. We humans think we can handle everything, but grief is so severe. Uh, but just to know kind of the animal that you're dealing with here and be gentle on yourself. So. Sandra, that is so sweet. Thank you for doing that for everybody. My I'm a giver. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to some questions. And there's several people that are writing. Thank you. Um, the next question is from Sue. Do our children in spirit know what is happening in our lives? Absolutely, they know. And that's the fun part, because sometimes they share birthday surprises that they're not supposed to. So I was actually doing a mediumship reading and someone in spirit had said, you know, let them know that I'll be there for the surprise birthday party. I didn't know that the surprise birthday party was for her husband that was sitting right next to her during the reading. So kind of blew that. So yes, they do absolutely know what's going on and they, and they join you. You know, I would say like Christmas, Thanksgiving, set a place at the table if you want for them, remember them, say wonderful things. So they are with you. They do know everything that goes on in life. That's really great. And, and uh, this uh, lady, young lady says, thank you for this. My son was 21 and I have only been able to go on for his son, who was almost two when my son died. Oh my goodness. Thank you for doing this for your grandson. Thank you for understanding where your son um, left his life behind for you to have that ability to step up and, and do what you can. What a beautiful, beautiful memory of your son. Thank you for that. And the spirit world thanks you. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, Melinda, can you talk a little bit about gratitude and maybe how that can play a part in us becoming more peaceful? Absolutely. So we have to look at things that have happened. Again, like I said, there's plenty of times I'm sure all of us can bring up some awful experiences in our life that um, uh, brings in hindsight, you can see hindsight's 2020, that will bring that gratitude. So when, when we're grateful for things that have happened in the negative, it creates the ability to, uh, to get that greater understanding, right? So if like when I talked to you earlier about um, the, the person that had, that had raped me, I look back on, on that and being grateful for what he had given to me. And I know that sounds probably just so crazy to think that, but what he had given to me was a greater understanding for other, mostly women, men as well, but that have had to experience this. Um, the gratitude for, for being able to share um, my knowledge, having the courage, because I know I have a lot of people that say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you said, said something like this, but having the courage to be able to share with, with all of you um, these things, this, this, this gratitude is something that becomes so um, underwhelming sometimes. We forget to have gratitude. Um, I re and I remember a time in my life where it was Thanksgiving and I had a, a very large part of my family with me. My parents were here, my oldest son that had moved away, he was here. And I remember going to sleep that night and thinking, I am so grateful for everybody being in my home. I know where everybody is. 
I don't have to worry. And I remember being so appreciative and grateful for what I have been given and what God gave to me. And I go back to that thought process on a regular basis because I remember what it feels like inside of me to have that gratitude and to share that with another person. Because sometimes we forget the littlest things in life. Right now, what are we going through? And I know this is really silly, but we're grateful if we get to go to the store and find toilet paper. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just like it's the littlest things in life that we forget to be grateful for. And that's what life is about. When we take everything and bring it down to the simplest forms, that's when you look at how grateful you're supposed to be in life. And that creates that inner peace, that inner knowledge, and the ability to grow within our own soul's journey. Thank you. And for anyone who's watching this after the fact from when we recorded this, we are recording this in the time when we're all in lockdown because of the coronavirus. And what you may be feeling too is like myself, there's been times that I've been having these waves of emotions. And, and you know what, that's part of grief as well. Life's not going the way we expected. So it's all tied in. And Melinda, if you could talk just a little bit about uh, what you th your speculations, because I, I know with myself, it's very hard to be a human being, but I buy into these negative thoughts that come into my mind sometimes. Is there any way we can acknowledge that and shift that to become more peaceful? Mm. Yeah, that's not easy, Sandra. You're right, um, because we, we start to uh, run something in our head over and over and over again and we create so much more negativity than what is actually there so how do we create the peace um again i i go back to because i do it myself i go back to remembering because it's hard when something isn't a part of the pattern of who you are or what you've done we forget excuse me we forget to sit back and say okay i can light this candle i can remember um lighting this candle five days ago and what that candle brought to me remembering the smallest of of peace in our lives you know you have to you have to look at your life and take yourself back to the simple times and hopefully we have we ha we all have a time in our life that was simple that was easy whether we were you know five years old at the time um but honestly you go back to the simplicity of what's supposed to be inside of our souls, you'll find that inner peace. You'll find the gratitude. You'll find the ability to heal who you are. Because again, you know, all of these other things that have happened have created us um, to look at ourselves and not, not heal ourselves, not be grateful for who we are. You know, we beat ourselves up so much our society, our world has, cre has created the thought process of who we're supposed to be, what's normal. That's, that's not what this world is about. You know, my youngest son is handicapped, and I remember, he's 23 now, I remember when he started in school, in kindergarten, they kept saying, this is what the normal kids do. This is the normal progression. I said, based on what? Based on what you chose what was normal? Why are you basing everything on what you choose as normal? We all learn different. My goodness, I would cry over math because I hated math so much. And once I found somebody that could explain math to me, it, how I understood it, not what the normal way was to teach it, it made it so much easier for me. And that's what we have to think about everything in life. We have to think about all of our things in life that we've had happen to us, go back to the naturalness of, of the simple side of life to how we can how we can create that peace again it's the inner peace and i know you guys have to have questions on inner peace i know there has to be something out there where you can give an example and say because i've had people say to me i don't understand how you can forgive how can you forgive somebody that does something like that i still have so much anger because somebody did a b and c maybe to my child maybe to my parent whatever it is i know that is and honestly if you ask those questions getting it out into the open helps you start to release that animosity maybe that you have in that, in that situation. So please feel free to ask questions in regards to that. Yes, I, 
know we got a little derailed because we were talking about forgiveness, but <laughs> this next question, we can incorporate in that as well. Uh, and then we have another statement here who is, has a peaceful statement here. Here's the question. If you lose a baby or have an abortion, what happens to that soul? The soul is exactly where everybody else's soul is. There's plenty of times when um, I have um, a parent that comes to me and they'll talk about, or excuse me, in the spirit world will show me that this baby would have never touched the earth, would never have been here on earth. But you know what? They're back in that spirit world just as fine as ever. And, you know, it's my belief that before a baby is born and they, they know if they're going to be actually born on earth, earth or not so i believe that free will comes in in fact i know it comes in in the spirit world um they know that prior to them coming here so they know that they're not going to be born and they tend to go back as well thank you and this lovely lady has a statement here and this to me just speaks volumes about helping you create your own inner peace she says i'm so glad to know my father-in-law wasn't by himself he was 82 and transitioned into a Brooklyn hospital because of COVID. This was three weeks ago. His family couldn't visit him, but I know now that he had loved ones with him in spirit to be with him. Oh, that is just beautiful and just so heartbreaking. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But if I may say, I mean, we all know that it, there are breathing issues. But and I don't know if you would know this, but prior to his passing, um, with his breathing issues that he would have had, um, would you also know that he wouldn't have been conscious prior to his passing? I don't know if she can hear me or can answer. Because the reason I'm saying that is because he steps forward, and I know we're not doing readings, but I just have to say this. He steps forward to let me know that he had so much peace that he... He was, I feel as though he was like there before he was actually there. And that's what he's showing me. And I don't know if, if she would understand that this was a part of his passing that he really wasn't present. I'll see if I can get her in here. Yeah, if she comes, if she would, if she comes back. That's beautiful. And I'm just so sorry. There she is. Let's see. Ah. Hang on a second. Trisha? You might have to unmute yourself on your side, Trisha. Hi, Trisha. If you, there you go. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> You're like, okay. darn, I had no idea. I just have the video. Okay, there it is. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Trisha. And Trisha, do you under do you understand when you this is this was you that you're talking about your father the past three weeks ago? Is that true? It, it's my husband's dad. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And do you understand that he would have been? Um, obviously, we all know because I can't pretend that I, that came to me from spirit. But we already all, already know that there are breathing uh, issues with this. Yeah. Do you also know that he would have um, been? Uh, not present, so to speak, in his passing? Like, in other words, he would have been, like, already asleep when he passed? No, I did not. So you don't, oh, so you don't know this? No, I don't know this. Okay. But, so, just for the heck of it, if, if, if you can find out for the piece of the family to know, mm -hmm. that he talks very much about the fact that he was in spirit prior to his body being gone here, from here. He was already in spirit. His soul was already there. Oh my he goodness. had he had so much peace with him when he actually went into the spirit world. Oh, that is so good to know. I'm going to share that with my sister-in-law and my and my husband definitely. They would be so good, so thrilled to know this. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm and again, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that Thank you, you that you've gone through this. I understand. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. One of my labors of love is doing my We Don't Die radio show, and I now have over 330 episodes. And this is not tooting my own horn, but it's to talk to people. And there are so many people who I mean, I've worked with, I've talked to doctors and nurses of hospice and people that sit by people's bedsides just before they pass. And I tell you what, and not that anyone is, wants to check out and go over there just yet, but the loved ones that come through, the angels, the people that are there to greet you, the joy, I mean, just 
even Steve Jobs from uh, Apple, his last words just before he passed, he, he looked over, I think it was his sister's shoulder, his wife's shoulder, I don't remember, with a big smile. And he says, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. Even my own uncle. I mean, there's just so many beautiful stories that we're not alone crossing the threshold. Really, I mean, it's crossing a finish line. We open our eyes. They're cheering us on. Our pets are there, our loved ones, and we're reunited. So if we can live life, and again, it's hard to be human, but try to remember that nobody's ever alone. We're always you are surrounded. So, so right, Sandra. You know, I, I remember somebody sent me a cartoon, and it was um, somebody lying in a bed, and they had just passed. And the spirit world was standing next to them, so happy to see them again. They're like, you're back, you're back. And it was us here on earth that's crying because we've lost them now to the spirit world. But if you think about it, it's just the same when they come here. They're sad to see them come here. They know that they need to come here. They know that they have their experiences they have to do. And then um, they're sad when, when they see us, when, when they see their soul come over this way so it's just so beautiful it's it truly is a big giant circle of love and life um even though i understand here is a lot of grief and sadness yeah okay here's somebody else i do you have more sure. things on your paper you want to get back to i just want to be mindful of time. No, no 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 no. i'm i'm good we're good okay. to chat okay and if anybody else has a um wants to either raise your hand or has a question i'll be happy to read it this one says my father was in hospice in and out of consciousness and I asked him, do you know who I am? And he said, yes, my mom, my mom. So I believe that she came for him. Not 100% sure on that if um, he believed it was the mom or not. But yeah, you just tap into that psychically if you would there. <laughs> Absolutely. So my understanding is that mom, your mom would have already been in the spirit world. And so as he's getting ready to cross into spirit, that um he would have been seeing her and and you know and yes the the thing is is the spirit world has a beautiful way of of almost superimposing their face onto somebody else um someone else that you uh, or sitting like her where she was sitting there and mom was able to superimpose herself so he feels that comfort remember they feel the comfort you know there's there's been lots of times that uh, if children are going to be passing into the spirit world, that the spirit world shows me that they create such a beautiful place for them to come to, almost like a Disneyland. So they have that beautiful comfort, the peace, the love, whatever you choose. I always say, you know, in the material world, you know, you get to choose when you go to the other side, you get to choose what you want. So I'm going to get a castle. I'm going to maybe have Tom Selleck be young again. You know, whatever it is that you choose in the, in the material world that brings you over into that material world with peace and love. And there's no, there is no fear at all, at all. Speaking of fear, fear is, fear is something that can keep us from living with peace. Any yes. words of wisdom when fear strikes? Yes, at two o'clock in the morning also. Um, yes, because fear is, um, and, I, and I'm not trying to minimalize it, but fear is sometimes is what we have created, not what reality is. So when we create something that um, maybe it goes back to another thought from another time in our life. And you think, oh my gosh, if this, if this took place, then that means this is going to take place again because I have that fear of bringing this back into my life. Um, you know, sometimes we have the circumstance of, um, you know, let's say our loved one passes um, and we were with them when they passed right and we watch them pass then you know however many years later you're in the same circumstance so you feel as though with your fear you're going to recreate that same circumstance and you bring that fear in and sometimes um it makes you so irrational that we forget again light the candle turn on that music remember that you are in control of your life you get to bring your own inner peace back and I know it's easier said than done. I get it. I lived, I lived with so much fear for uh, many years. And I, I understand where a lot of you were coming from. But I also understand that when I took the time 
to take a sidestep, not saying a step forward, I'm not saying a step backwards, but take a sidestep out of your own life and leaving the fear within that first person that you were and moving it over to that sidestep of who you get to be, you get to be peaceful again. You get to recreate the peace inside of you. And again, it's so easy to get lost and get wrapped up in, in so many things. I always, for me anyways, I wrote a lot of things down in books. So when I could look back, when I feel like I'm ready to rip my hair out of fear, um, from fear and anxiety, um, I would look back in my book and re read words that I would write when I was peaceful when I would leave my meditation, um, finish my meditation, write things down that the spirit world shared with me, go back to that, read it, recognize that they truly are with you. Because I know that sometimes, well, not sometimes, I have a lot of people that say, I just think it's my imagination. I don't really feel like the spirit world's really with me. And I say, you know what? Your imagination is what creates the spirit world to come through. Because the spirit world uses your imagination. So they're one in, in the other. And yes, they are there because there are things that I know about people's lives that I would never know unless the spirit world showed me. So putting the fear to the side, bringing the memory of who you are into the forefront is so important. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I was going to say something and now it's gone. <laughs> wasn't meant to be. Our friend who had, had made that comment about her father said, yes, he was comf comforted. He had a look of joy at seeing his mother. Oh, yeah. that's so wonderful. And we have two similar, did you want to say something? I have yep. two similar things. Um, both dealing with people in hospice. One was, I'm going to read them both because you can weave them both together. My husband was in a hospice house. I was staying the night and woke up at 2.45 a.m., with such alertness, I held his hand and he took three breaths and was gone. Mm -hmm. What woke me up? Now, this other one is similar. Hi, Melinda. My brother-in-law was in hospice with cancer and he actually told his wife the date he was going to pass. And indeed, he did pass on that very date he gave her. Did someone from the spirit realm tell him that date? Could you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about those mechanics? What would wake somebody up just to the right time and how would the soul know mm -hmm. of that date? So um, both of those, you're right, are very similar. Um, the, the lady that was awakened um, at the 2.45, I think you said in the morning, I feel as though that was the spirit world actually coming in and getting ready to take him to the other side and the energy of it all because you know she, she spoke of being so bright and so alert at that time the energy of them coming um a absolutely um woke her up uh, also to be able to say that her last goodbyes and i think that's just so beautiful and whether he was already all in spirit and just physically still here and maybe he was the one that woke her up so he could be able to say goodbye and I think that that part is just so amazing. Um, and I'm so sorry, the, the second one, I was so focused on that first Oh, one. that's okay. That the uh, brother-in-law actually knew the date he was going to pass and date. told his wife. And right. did somebody from the spirit realm tell him that date? I don't know. You know, that's, a, that's an interesting thought because I don't know if it's necessary the spirit world would come to tell you that. Or maybe it's something that you just have within your soul and that knowing. Um, prior to prior to the passing because sometimes don't you ever look at yourself and think well there's a deja vu time where you're like holy toledo i know i've done this before or there's a time where you just know things are going to happen because you know these things are going to happen you tend to have the ability to um uh, pick, pick those dates yourself and maybe this was a person that had that ability to kind of know what was going to be going on um, that they were have that ability to bring that forward to there's so many different ways of things happening but the bottom line is is we all get to go to the same place and that's the beautiful part and it's so peaceful thank you here's here's a comment here that uh, I know your words will help bring some inner peace our friend says, I have been present when several people have passed. 
My wife's passing was beautiful, but my mom's panicky last words were, I don't want to die. I encouraged her to go, but I've always felt guilty. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry. Um, and that goes back to when we were talking about the guilt. Um, so here's what happens. My, and, and I can say this to you because I know my mom was very fearful of passing because my mom thought that she was going to go to, to either purgatory or hell because of her upbringing. And I think that happens to people a lot of times, especially, especially the elderly, because they were raised with such deep religious beliefs that were irrational as far as I'm concerned, because they're not real, that that fear of passing into the spirit world, you think, oh my goodness, I didn't get to do what I was supposed to do. I didn't get to make up for my sins. I didn't confess. I didn't, whatever those thoughts are that goes zoom mean through please don't feel guilty have no other thought whatsoever except for the fact that your mom's at peace she's at peace especially now because as you see where she is and i don't know if you can answer this or not um that, that asked this question about your mom but do you understand her, her having um deep religious beliefs I always forget to unmute myself. <laughs> I, I don't want to put this uh, fella in the room if he doesn't want to, but if you'd like to right. raise your hand, I'd be happy to have you talk to Melinda. That's a yes. All right, perfect. And I'll just give it a second. The mechanics of bringing the person in just to Take a minute. Okay, this is John. Hey, John. Oh, John, you might have to unmute yourself on your side. There we go. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, to my knowledge, I mean, she was not uh, a, a deeply religious person. And uh, we grew up with, uh, uh, my sister and I ended up find, kind of religion on our own uh, because of a conflict that my parents had had with a priest early on priest there you go so your mom probably had a lot of fear as to where you were going to go or where a soul was going to go after they passed um, and because of those religious unfortunately because of those religious beliefs it created so much fear um, because you, you know if you think about it religion creates fear to create control and I believe in spirituality. I believe that we all get to the other side, no matter what it is. But with your, with your mom, that was, that's where her fear lies. I feel very strongly that she didn't feel that she did what she was supposed to do when she was here. And honestly, John, there is nothing at all that you could have done differently. Your mom, soon as she went to the other side, had great peace. And you need to know that. She need, you need to know that um, because um, at, she shows me that a few other, a few other people that were with her um, actually took her by her hand. And it was like an, in, it was an instant peacefulness when she went to the other side. Please don't feel guilty at all. Thank you. That's very important to me. I hope it helps. Thank you. Yeah. Being human is so tough. This Whatever it is, this inner voice that we have that when we wake up in the morning says we're too old, too ugly, too fat, whatever that may be, it doesn't want to die. It, 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 you know, it, and I can't help but think that in those final moments or towards that end, you know, that, that's that voice talking. It's not our soul talking. Right. We are our own worst enemies. I have actually um, helped with families, not necessarily the person that's passing in hospice, but the families around during, during hospice and sharing with them who is standing next to their loved ones in spirit and then saying, okay, so ask them, do you see so-and-so? Does this mean this to you or that to you? Because the spirit world is standing there showing them, this is what life is going to be like. I'm going to be here with you now. But some people are afraid obviously when they're going when they're getting ready to cross over into spirit so they don't want to believe what's happening in front of them sometimes 
And those are the lessons. That's why I feel so important that people like Sandra and, and, and anybody else that shares the knowledge from what the spirit world wants us to know is because we're supposed to know it, because we're supposed to have that inner peace. We're coming from what religion has done to us to what spiritually, spirituality can do for us. And that is such a, uh, an important aspect of who we get to grow into. Spirituality has given me that peace that I can't even tell you. Again, I was raised very Catholic. I taught in, at CCD when my children were over for like 19 years for crime sakes. Never once would I teach about hell because I did not believe in hell. And I think it's just... It can be so damning for, especially for children, as you're, you know, coloring in the blood droppings from when Jesus was crucified. I just can't get into into that part of, of the religion that they that they poured on all of us. Mm, I agree. This is a, a nice story here, but you can maybe talk to the flip side. Not everyone has a chance to say their goodbyes. So let me just read this, and then maybe you can address the people that don't get an opportunity how they can still do that. Uh, our friend here says, my 17-year-old son gained his angel wings February 12th, 2020. Mentioned to my reading that he woke me up in the morning that he's about to leave. He passed in the afternoon very peacefully in front of our family and his classmates and friends. Everyone in the room had a chance to say their goodbyes. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's beautiful. That's, that's, that's beautiful. And you're right, not everybody gets to say goodbye to their loved ones face to face. But guess what? We still can. We still can talk to them. You know, there's a reason why we have mediums. There's also a reason why you have a soul more than just the learning part. But remember, you can connect your, your soul to your loved one's soul to have that one on one conversation with your loved ones. And being able to tell them exactly how you feel, goodbye, for now. Remember, it's only for now. And that's only in the, in the physical, not, in, not within the, the soul-to-soul -soul connection. But knowing that they're always there for you to have conversations with. You may not hear them the same, but remember, please remember that they're with you. Please remember that your loved ones are there bringing you that inner peace. That's how we all started off with this, is that inner peace, that forgiveness, the understanding what happens when we get to the other side. Because I want to say, if we don't have the ability to understand what happens when we, when we move into the spirit world and why we're moving into the spirit world and why we're here, it's for our own soul's progression, we tend not to learn the way we're supposed to learn. I'm, you know, you talked about great, being grateful before, for uh, Sandra and you know I am so grateful that I've had the experiences that I've had that that again I, I know I said that before but if we don't have these things uh, these the negative how do we know what positive is if we don't have the hate in our lives how do we understand what the love is so all of these things that we have is the you know think of the, the yin and the yang you know where we have that balance back and forth because how are we going to appreciate what we have if we have never appreciated the other side of things appreciating who you are understanding your own inner peace bringing in that meditation um, understanding what your person that that creates things um, in your life, the negativity that they can create in your life. Understand why they're being like that. doesn't mean you have to keep letting it in, but it does mean that you can lovingly walk away from that situation. And I always pray for the best of who they can be, but it doesn't mean I have to be around them. Yeah, very true. And, you know, you use the word pray. Prayer is an access to inner peace. Sometimes things are so much bigger than ourselves and to have that trust and faith. And even if you haven't ever prayed, having that loving intention, right? Right, and it doesn't have to be a formal prayer. <laughs> Just speaking to God, you know, getting that greater understanding. And, it, and like, you know, we talk about, you know, I'm joking to say two o'clock in the morning, but in the middle of the night when you have that, um, that anxiety that hits, prayer. Prayer is the best way, talking to the spirit world, understanding, ask them. All you have to do is ask, show me what I need to do. Explain to me how I can do things differently. 
please give me that greater understanding so I can learn from this. What do I need to learn so that not only do I grow myself, but I can share with others my experiences? Thank you. We'll do one last question. And then there's just a couple other topics regarding to peace I want to bring up, being mindful of time with everybody. My goodness, it goes by fast. It does. Uh, and this person says, is it possible to share if my dad was met by his loved ones when he passed? He was in a, a long, in a care facility when he passed it, alone in a care facility when he passed at 4 a.m. in the morning. I would love it if you could share something about his passing. And then it's, it goes on to say, we were with him the day before, but not on the morning when he passed. I know you have discussed that he would be with his loved ones, would just love some confirmation or some info. Thank you. Um, okay, that would take a little bit of a reading. Um, um, if they could come on just so I could confirm a couple things. Well, the interesting thing is- They can is always go to my website. Yeah, I would say the person goes to the website because the um, name that they've given is no longer in the room. Yeah. But I think maybe just just speaking briefly on that passing process. I mean, I know right. loved ones are there to meet us, but then what? Maybe. Um. So yes, absolutely. Your loved ones are there to, to to meet you. They've they have created whatever it is that that they know is your comfort to bring you to that other side. Um. Even though we're not with our loved ones, like I was just explain to you, like with my mom, I was in total shock because she was not ill. Um, even though we're not with our loved ones, my goodness gracious, they sure are with us after they pass. They know where they are. They understand where they are. You know, you have a lot of people that will say, oh, so-and-so died in an accident. Uh, where how do they know where they are what what's happening with them they are they are they in a panic and i have to say to you no they're not in a panic they know exactly where they're going you know our world in this work has has been creating falsities about what happens to the soul there's a lot of falsities out there that's happened to the soul and that's the one part that bothers me so much because they've created fear there is no fear in death. I know that people talk about the fear and pain prior to death, but we need to understand that our loved ones, even again, I said this at the beginning, even though there is nobody, let's say, that we know in spirit before, we still have loved ones in spirit. We have our guides. They helped create where you get to come in your greater understanding why we're coming here. Remember that you're not alone. Remember that there is no fear. Remember that they will always be with you because love never dies. Oh, thank you very much. I'm going to be mindful of time. I know there's other people that have questions and I know uh, we can follow up. I know you've been very generous with helping parents heal parents. You've got a list a mile long of people requesting readings. I know you have never charged the parents and God bless you for being who you're being but just a couple of things if you could just touch on would journaling help us find peace and also of being in service to other people would that help us with inner peace yes so journaling is incredibly important and you know you can take journaling and ch turn that also into learning how to automatic write because with automatic writing it's a beautiful uh, aspect of bringing your loved ones through because sometimes when you're automatic writing and you're not thinking about what you're writing all of a sudden your loved ones will come through and write for you journaling through this aspect through this process of your grief is not only helpful for you um, you know you look back on it in six months you look back on it in a year then you can definitely share um, your goals and where you have been with others. Because unfortunately, there's going to be yet another person that's going to go through the same thing that you're going through. And doesn't it make you feel wonderful to help that person get to the other side of this? I think that's so important. But you can't help them unless you are on your good way of healing yourself. Oh, so true. I do know that I can't be thinking about myself when I'm having my focus on others. Right. So that's always been something that's helped me in my grief is to get involved in picking up the phone and finding out how someone else is. Right. Absolutely. 
Um, Melinda, before we close, I just want to share a few things with folks. This is our first time coming together and something together, which I love. So with everyone, we're talking about uh, doing a mediumship demonstration at some point with Melinda, because it would be the same kind of thing we're experiencing now. And then if you can take the person, we bring them in and you talk. So we're working on that. Um, for peace and healing this month, the month of May, I'm part of doing something called Soul Quest, which is a time where you can actually follow a very healing meditation, puts you into that peaceful zone, and also helps uh, send prayers to the world and people that need it. So that's special. While we're still in lockdown, we're doing a Sunday gathering, we call it. it again, it's to keep that negative mind busy on something that is inspirational, motivational. So we do a non-denominational, not church service, but at the end of every uh, service, there's actually a medium that does medium readings, all free as part of it. So that's all available and we don't die radio. And I'll, I'll send you a follow-up email and they'll have all of these links. Next Sunday, we're going to do something similar with a friend called, um, her name is Mickey Havelock, and she's been the most recent guest on We Don't Die Radio. And it's talking about writing letters to your soul and really building up that relationship that Melinda was talking about. Want to just a big shout out to our friends at helpingparentsheal.org. It is a phenomenal organization, free to belong to, and so much support. Absolutely beautiful. Melinda, any closing words for yourself? All I have to say is thank you so much for coming on this journey because I can't appreciate enough for each and every one of you that are so interested not only in your self-healing but in the healing of the spirit world. Remember, we're here to heal both worlds and together it's something that we can accomplish. So thank you so much, everyone. Oh, thank you. And for you at home, melindakushner.com is her website. And again, be looking in the next few hours from an email from me. It's a replay of this with all the links, the links to the free copy of the book. Um, I'm sorry if we couldn't answer all questions just now, but no, we're just an email away. Okay. We're in your corner. Life after death is a reality. Being a human being is by far the toughest thing we will ever have to deal with. But just if you can, remember that you have a whole unseen world of people around you cheering you on and loving you. You're never alone. So with that, I want to thank everybody and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.